IPX is here. We are boots on the ground in Taiwan, Taipei at Computex 2025, where we're going to be talking to a company called Xella Robotics, X-E-L-A. They've got a sensor that they call a Taxel, a 3D tactile sensor that we can use to help our electronics feel the world around us. I'm going to be asking them how it works, what makes it useful and what applications they see. Let's go talk to someone from the company. All right, what is a Taxel? So a Taxel is one unit of a touch sensor, as mm -hmm. you can see here. Mm -hmm. And in our case, our touch sensor uses a magnet, so you can see like one uh, magnet here. And we can uh, sense uh, force in three axes, X, Y, and Z axis. So this is triaxle force sensing. Is that, is that where the name Taxel comes from? Uh, I'm not really sure what the <laughs> origin is of <laughs> no Taxel, but that's what we use it. Uh, so why is this useful? Why would somebody want to use a taxel in a design? Whoa, hold there. Only 12% of you are subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right. Well, I mean, if you think about it, we as humans, we can touch and feel things. Yep. But it's useful. For example, robots, they're just cold metal and they don't have a sense of touch. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is give the robot a sense of touch yeah. so that they can grasp things without actually breaking it, for example. Right, so we're saying now maybe a robot would be able to grab an egg or something fragile and not just crush it. Yes, for example. Yes. In fact, that's what we do there, actually. We'll take a video of that demo, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're talking about lots of robotics applications. Is there any applications that you can see that maybe our design engineers at home who are mainly all about electronics engineering, is, is there any applications you could think of using the sensor that aren't necessarily robotic touch? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, uh, anything that requires touch or mm -hmm. uh, force. Mm -hmm. um, so think about like uh, uh, clothing, for example. Mm -hmm. So for example, we actually work together with uh, a backpack maker. Right. So they put the sensors actually on the straps so mm -hmm. that you can understand the distribution of the weight. Or, uh, I mean, we're not doing that right now, but mm -hmm. I can imagine, for example. So I love snowboarding. Oh, so cool, yeah. Say you put the sensors in your boots so yes. that you can understand your riding pattern, use AI to learn from that, give you suggestions, mm -hmm. uh, anything that needs a touch or a pressure sensing. Yeah. Right, so you said this is, they operate uh, by magnetic principle. Right. So you were just talking about putting them under a snowboard. Now, we both know for a fact that magnets and different temperatures, you need some sort of offset. How, how do these deal with different temperatures and can I expect accurate results? Right. in harsh environments. Right, well, I mean, to be honest, the snowboarding is just some, is a fantasy of mine. Yes, yeah, yeah. But you're right, like they, they operate on uh, magnets, so yep. that means that uh, they get affected by temperature, mm -hmm. but also by uh, magnetic interference from other nearby objects, right? Yes. Uh, that are, for example, metallic or uh, magnetic in general. Yeah. But uh, that's what we also compensate for. So as you can see here, we actually keep track of the temperature of the of the sensor and yep. we uh, actively compensate for temperature as well as um, um, magnetic interference uh, compensation. So for example, in here there's a magnet like uh, the, um, what are these, headphones? Yes. And on the right, you can see the raw data and you can see that it gets affected. Wow. You can see it a little bit. Yep. But on the left, you can see that it's compensated. So these green dots are showing the magnitude of force. Right. And you've also got a vector direction showing. Right, right. Amazing. So it really is a three-dimensional force sensor. Yes. So this is, quite, this is quite important as well. We're talking about interference between the different uh, magnetic taxels. Now, these they don't just come in a one by one. You've got everything up to, what is your highest density of, of taxels, is it? I is eight by eight or what's the well, highest? Uh, I mean, one taxel is just this size, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically, you could make any size, uh, right. any shape that you want. And we have also uh, flexible ones, so you can also make curved fingertips. Yeah. And yep. this one, for instance, has 368 mm -hmm. uh, points in just one single hand. Wow. And it only uses two CAN buses. <laughs> I was going to say, look, 368 different sensors and only eight wires combined. Right, right. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, we try to make it very convenient because you can just daisy chain everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, 368 on two buses, and that's all you need. Amazing. Before taxels, is a question we would like to ask. How did electronics feel? How was this done before your product? So before this, so I would say that what's revolutionary about our product is that we use uh, magnets to sense the change in magnetic field, right? Okay. So we don't necessarily just push exactly on the dot, but any small change in the silicon gets detected as right. a deformation and that okay. affects the magnetic field. 
which we can then register as touch. But before, maybe the, the first few sensors were maybe using capacitors or right, like, yeah, yeah. like a resistant right. like that. But that's yeah. just like kind of like a almost like a button, I'd say, like it's right. only in one direction. And yeah. you just push it in. You can't get the amount right. of range or dynamic range right. that you could get using this technique. Right. But now we can Maybe. do it in three directions, but also have very high uh, resolution mm -hmm. because it's a fully distributed, continuous um, sensing of the magnetic field, of course. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, last question. How do you think that this is going to change the world? Is this an invention that is going to completely revolutionize manufacturing and robotic handling and even more? How do you feel? Well, I mean, we're just uh, at the beginning, to be honest. So uh, as you can see around here also, there are many uh, vision-based uh, solutions. Yes. Uh, which are very uh, mature, very, uh, they work very well right now. Yeah. But uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when we were at the start of deep learning and image recognition, mm -hmm. uh, nobody knew how that would revolutionize the, the robotics world, right? Yeah. And I think that we are now at the beginning um, of uh, tactile sensors, just like with, uh, with the vision sensors mm -hmm. in the beginning. Uh, because, well, we as humans, we also use eyes to, to look, but we also use touch. So now that the era of vision is more or less like mature, yes. uh, we now start to make the, the sensors, and as you can see, they're very sensitive. And uh, on top of this, we now try to make more machine learning applications, yeah. to slip detection or picking up very fragile items. So I think in 10 years, 20 years, hopefully we will have a hybrid so that you have both vision and uh, sensing. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that this will, be, this will be very important. It will be absolutely necessary yeah. to our all kinds of applications. To our fans, to our IPXs, if you can think of any applications of this, you should definitely put it down in the description. One that I can already think of is something like uh, assistive technology for the blind. You know, you add this and like maybe an edge AI chip or, or, or you know, a chip that is capable of machine learning combined with your sensors. I mean, you could have, um, you could be revolutionizing how deaf and blind people communicate with the world with this. Yeah, for Such it. a good application you got here. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.